welcome back to the you know what it is i'm not even gonna say it yeah <laughs> the back. unknown welcome to the unknown podcast <laughs> with your hosts scratch and sniff oh geez i ain't seen scratch and sniff in a while that's that that does uh that brings back memories brings it back just thought of it today my cat was uh scratching the scratch post thought of that old scratch and sniff ah yeah yeah that, that's hilarious oh how you been been good good sleepy kind of weekend well maybe not sleepy but uh quiet weekend around here we've been kind of uh -huh. busy the other weekend so kind of took it easy not much on friday went to a little uh a little speakeasy had uh, had this guy playing couple guys playing some some folky kind of music it was really nice over in a uh, north olmstead area oh, oh really? and last night went over to my girlfriend's sister's house so that was cool the guy actually uh my uh my sister or sorry my girlfriend's sister's fiance is uh he's not much of a country fan but he likes eric church and so that's that's his country musician guy and so i'm trying to actually get him on this podcast so maybe he'll listen to this one eric church yeah there's a lot to be said about eric church i mean that's definitely respectable i, I think largely among my friends that do not like country music the people that they know in country or that they predominantly listen to i think i've gotten eric church i got one guy who likes florida georgia line um I got at least three or four people that know who Kenny Chesney is and Zach Brown, and they love that kind of vibe. And then there's one guy who just loves John Denver, but he just does not like the rest of country music. And anybody knows uh, Take Me Home Country Roads, so that's their default. You know, it's funny. You just you have to have that one artist kind of get you into the door, and then you start discovering other artists that are pretty good, you know, like Brooks and Dunn here was kind of my gateway. And then you listen to a lot more artists that are similar, Alan Jackson, Joe Diffie. And then you get into more older and you start discovering guys like Merle Haggard, which we're gonna talk about today. But before we do that, uh, congratulatory, this is a little, little celebration right here on this podcast, 3000 streams. How about that? 3000 streams just two months ago little over two months ago we hit 2000 streams so we okay. are pretty consistent ever since like this past fall we've been consistently doing really well my goal was by the end of the year hit 5000 streams i think that's going to be i think we might even hit 7000 i think upwards of 8000 but you know mm -hmm. All so right. doing doing well doing well in that that regards so the song that we are going to be talking about today, I'm actually going to put you on the spot, see how much you, how much research you kind of did with this. Going to mix okay. things up first time. Here, pull, okay. pull up the lyrics right now. And uh, while I'm talking about the facts, um, usually I do the breakdown of this, but I'm going to have you do it because you might do a little bit better than, at this, this one than I did, uh, maybe. But we're going to be comparing, so Merle Haggard's song, it's all in the movies. And I've been listening to a lot of Merle Haggard recently. Not a oh, you guy. Have. What? Oh, I said, oh, you have. That's, no, a whole awesome. lot in preparation for this and just to see what it's all about. And I think he is, he's a fantastic, one of the greatest. But this song, It's All in the Movies, the, it was the title and the lead track to Merle Haggard and the Strangers 1976 album. Mm -hmm. The uh, The song... Uh, released actually the year before in 1975 in September as a single and went to number one on the charts country charts and the the live version which we're going to be comparing to is the Ronnie Dunn version released this past December 2020 off the album Sing Me Back Home the music of Merle Haggard live which is kind of a, a live compilation or album by a bunch of country artists like Ronnie Dunn, Willie Nelson, Alabama, uh, John Mellencamp, and oh, they're yeah. all singing Merle Haggard songs. 
some of them multiple artists on a track some of them just one person and yeah so if you want to just get into the lyrical breakdown there's actually just a verse and then two choruses so if you just want to break down strictly the lyrics and then we'll get into our opinions of them go all right. ahead all right so let's give this a shot as a greenhorn in breaking down of lyrics i will give this the old college try well i think honestly in the beginning it, it sort of tells a story about like kind of being at the movies with somebody you know you, you kind of picture a man and a woman um watching a movie and so um the man loves how the movie began and um they kind of get lost in the plot and when the when the movie ends the lady is crying on the man's shoulder and he's uh he's talking about um like a fire burning out of control how the woman got caught up in the in the actor's performance that they're watching on the screen and basically the chorus that follows is a uh, uh, a lot of consolation it's saying um that's all in the movies and that's not going to happen to you or i the, the couple that's watching the movies and um so baby don't cry because it's all in the movies and and it's not going to happen to us and that happens um and, and that that happens twice here and you know i'm surprised to it's it's not very much in terms of lyrics very very short but definitely um no, there's not out. there's not much there's one verse a chorus a breakdown and another chorus yeah. so i'm gonna so we're kind of changing things up and uh you know maybe we'll do this for a little while kind of we kind of been stagnant a little bit you know have our yeah. rhythm but first how was that breakdown i mean like it, yeah it was a good i mean there wasn't somewhat. a whole lot to break down of the song yeah, exactly <laughs> i honestly felt like having you do it because there's not I don't really feel like I can break it down very well. There wasn't a whole lot. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, yeah, you pretty much said what I was going to say. I was going to say also in the first verse, they kind of compare someone's love or a couple's love to a movie or a, a, a couple's love in the movies. So this is, I'm going to do my opinion of the original song and then the live version. So the original version, right. excellent song. Love the song, much different than most Merle Haggard songs. Much, much different. It really the vibe I got from it, and this is throwing it uh, into a different, whole different ballpark. But if anyone out there listens to or has ever listened to the Carpenters, look them up. I get that kind of a vibe much more of a classical, smooth jazz, bluesy kind of vibe than most Merle Haggard songs. That being said, very respectable. I appreciate the lyrics, even though there's, like I said, not really a whole lot of lyrics in it. One of the greats, one of the great songs for one of the all time country music legends. And, you know, this is how great of an artist he was. So I was listening to his playlist uh, it's called This Is Merle Haggard. They have it for pretty much any artist on Spotify. And it, it was way down towards the end of the playlist. And this is a number one hit for him. So that's how, you know, they usually have the more popular songs towards the top. And uh, that's how many popular songs or how many great songs this guy had. This is a number one hit and it didn't even make towards the top of this playlist. And the Ronnie Dunn version, uh, quite honestly, did not like it as much. You know, it's surprising because Ronnie Dunn, he had these songs in the 80s that had sort of this kind of feel. She put the sad in all his songs, songs like that, that, that were kind of, you know, he was singing this sort of similar thing. But I really thought this song kind of fit Merle Haggard's voice than Ronnie Dunn's voice or at least, at least at, at this point in his mm -hmm. life. And, you know, I thought the original recording was extremely sharp, extremely clean. And obviously the live version was not because it is live. And, you know, I just, uh, I thought Ronnie Dunn might do a little bit better on one of Merle Haggard's more traditional country songs. 
Okay. All right. I... All right, let me get into this, because I actually am going to disagree with you on that. I think that the live version, well, first of all, is a heck of a lot better than the... Um, than the recorded version. Although I will say you are right in that the recording of the track on the recorded version is impeccable. However, I honestly, and maybe this is my personal bias, but I happen to be of the mindset that most live or most music sounds better live than when it is recorded. And I think um, in this case, I think that rings true. Now, I want to talk about the the things that I found were a little bit different. I thought that the Merle Haggard version is definitely um, kind of more laid back, quiet. And something that really surprised me was Merle Haggard actually like attempting sort of a soulful type of of singing. Now that, at least in my opinion of Merle Haggard, the majority of music that I've listened to is either him singing the talking blues or it's Mama Tried or something like that that's kind of more of the low side of his voice. Like now we kind of get to see the higher side of Merle Haggard, like, you know, that that like tenor range more of that. Now, I personally think that the song, the song does fit him well, but I think that Ronnie Dunn does an amazing job with it. Um, another thing that, that really... Um, was interesting that I found um, was the the breakdown of the the breakdown the acoustic breakdown in the middle of the song that separates the two choruses because there's no there's no second verse but the acoustic breakdown there it's just so free flowing in the or in the original recording in the Merle Haggard recording it, it's very free flowing and it sounds kind of like something that you'd hear from Merle Haggard. However, with the Ronnie Dunn live version paired with the soulfulness of his voice, because I think his voice is, he, he, he has the capacity as a singer to reach that high tenor range. Contrary to like, you look at Johnny Cash or you look at Conway Twitty or, or, or even Merle Haggard, like they just can't sing that high. Ronnie Dunn is, is the antithesis of that. He can sing ridiculously high. And that's, I think that makes the, the tenor sort of tone of his voice makes him, him it sound amazing now about that guitar breakdown though that guitar breakdown they had they added some sort of like a uh in the background this steel guitar this like i don't know if it was a steel guitar or just a fuzz pedal or something that made this really cool like psychedelic whining noise in, in the background and i thought it was i thought that was really cool to hear that but I think that the guitar breakdown in the live version almost made it sound like he was singing um, some sort of bachata or like uh, or Latin music it literally sounded like that because it was like uh, just like a like one of those um, Hispanic songs that has a has a nice no, soulful guitar breakdown in it I, I, I completely agree that that sounded exactly like that. It sounded beautiful. I loved it. It was that was so unexpected and so beautiful. But uh, yeah, you can you can go. Yeah, no, it definitely it didn't sound like a typical Merle Haggard song. You know, I encourage everyone if you like country music at all, go and listen to this guy because I didn't listen to him growing up. You know, he's kind of in a different era. You know, I listened to more you know, what my parents listened to, which was more 90s and 2000s. But now that I'm able to go back and listen to him, he's phenomenal. He's absolutely great. And this one's not not your typical one, but it just sounds really good. I don't know, the Ronnie Dunn one, you know, it, uh, I don't know. I just don't, I, I, I really appreciated his songs more when he didn't sound like this. I appreciated it more on the, the Brooks and Dunn types than the the eighties kind of uh, Ronnie Dunn singing much like this. I don't know. I don't know, but uh, it's 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 what it is. And uh, so yeah, check out this album. 
I haven't listened to all of it, but there's a uh, there's actually another comparison we're gonna do. The last song on this uh, this this album, mm-hmm. they have like I don't even know how many artists it is. It's like twenty. I didn't even count how many. There's like Hank Hank Jr., Ronnie Dunn, Toby Keith. Like everyone on this album is singing Oki from Muskogee. And so we're going to review what? Everyone on the album singing Oki from Muskogee? Yes, yes. Listen to that song. They wow. only sing um, about a minute and a half of it. They sing the first verse and the chorus. And, you know, I feel like it's kind of, you know, I wish they would have had like Willie Nelson or someone singing it versus like everyone because. They don't even sing the whole song, but we're going to review that. So check that out, and we'll be back to uh, business as usual. Ronnie Dunn and... Yeah, and back, to, back to that album that we've been working on, back to, like, Brand, Brand New Man. Man? That's yeah. been a while. <laughs> yeah, been, yeah. I know, it's, it, it, it's been so long, I almost forgot what we were working on there. That's, yeah. I forgot, actually, Ronnie Dunn came out with another song that we had mentioned. On, on the Johnny Cash album, so we still have to do that too. Oh yeah, it's all this so new we material. Work, we, we got our work cut out for us, man. We got our work cut out. Also, uh, the uh, the Up Church uh, oh, documentary yeah. that's gonna. Oh be, man, yeah, we gotta do be, that. That's gonna be uh, an upcoming one because I actually already did all the notes for it because I was excited to watch it, and so. You go ahead and you yeah. watch that. Take yeah. some notes. Yeah, I, I got it. I gotta go. I gotta go watch that. I've been dying to watch it for so long. Cause that that is awesome. That's a, that's just a good that. one. He has a, yeah, the the mud to gold. That was his new his new album. Um, yeah. And I I've been listening to that recently. It's been pretty good. Pretty good work out of there. But I'm gonna save that for another episode. All right. Like us on Facebook. Join our group. We'll see you guys next time. See you around.